So I received this box the other day. It's the multi kernel switch for the Commodore 64. And um, I haven't shown you this yet, but this is the board I designed for the strike fix with the um, video buffer. So this looks like a really lot of components, but remember, this one can sit at the modulator port, like this, or under the VIC chip, like this. So, therefore, there's options. There will be footprints there that are, that are not in use. Uh, so, I moved the regulator that was here, up here, because that one gets hot. Um, The back side, oops, sorry, doesn't have all these options as before because um, I figured out uh, this selection between audio and chroma that I had before that was actually not needed because <laughs> I thought I could um, select these two because when you have a Commodore 64C, then the chroma is moved. But there's another problem which does this impossible. It makes it impossible for me because these uh, pins, these rows of pins, these two groups of pins, they have to be moved together. So, <laughs> so that doesn't make any sense. So therefore, I removed it altogether. The uh, option to select which pin. So, so for C six and four C, this doesn't work. Except if you put it under the VIC chip, then it should work. So I soldered up the circuit yesterday, and I noticed that um, there was a problem with the pick. As usual, one of the pins is always input, the uh, master clear pin. And usually it's on um, RA2, but this is GP, <laughs> they are called GP here, so it was on GP3 instead. So I did route it incorrectly then because of that, so because I just assumed it was on GP2, the uh, input only. So I fixed that and I have to update these. Okay, so over at the GitHub you have the uh, multi-kernel switchless C64 project and you can see also I have a switchless 555 and that was the one you saw in my videos where I did the um, optional where did the optional microcontroller you can see there is has the uh, ant line uh, whatever yeah and then you have the digital flip-flops, but I thought maybe that was uh, taking too much board space, so I went with the microcontroller alone. So you can see it's the same circuit, it is just the microcontroller. And the problem with the, this is um, GP3 is the input only pin. All the others are inputs and outputs, or can be. But this one can only be input, so I have connected a red LED and that doesn't work. So I can't drive a LED from this. I didn't know that, so when I got the board I had to fix it. So what I've done, I have switched these two. Except for the programming a port has to be on the exact uh, places, so on the correct places. So I'll try and overexpose it a little bit, because the <laughs> dark boards, they, uh, they are not so easy to film. You know, I can do this on the iPad. So you can see the traces more easily. It's actually easier to see it on camera. So there you have R3. I made a uh, cut. Sorry for the amateur hour here for the soldering. It's not the best. <laughs> because the uh, resistor, they fall out when I solder them. So, but anyway, it's just a prototype. And here you see the uh, big 12. F629. And this is the programming port, uh, just in case I need it, because when I solder this in, I can't really take it out again that easily. So I haven't used the programming port yet. I just programmed it in the programmer, but I think the program is okay now.
it doesn't have the EEPROM yet functionality so may add that later I should do that so and then you have the two connectors this is our pin the pin you can see I have soldered them in here and here and uh, they are thin but uh, they are not that thin as a uh, actual microprocessor or a chip so and the other thing I did was to put a link here to a trace you can't almost can't see but it goes down to hold on I have a link from here and it goes down okay there's a trace from this pin which goes down here and I have linked it into this one because I know this one goes up again up to that red lead which I had cut so Mm, all of this is just details so it doesn't matter and here you can have the uh, RGB LED so I have the RGB LED now so I bought a little bit of this and that from uh, a company called electroshop.no and um, I put them all on the head because my name is on all of them it's a bit annoying we don't need capacitors because we have the uh, microcontroller now so I was looking for a LED but I can't find it right now so yeah there it is you can see they have four wires and the longest one is ground and then you have red and then the two next on from the ground and to the left is green and then blue so red green blue this one anyway so the idea is that I put it in the uh, a socket down there I, I regret using a 1.5 millimeter pitch on that socket because there is actually room for a larger uh, socket so or a header as it's called so but for now I will use it and just solder a cable onto it so. I bought this uh, super cheap banana I thought maybe okay they are not uh, very good quality but doesn't matter for, for what I'm going to use it for but look inside there that's just useless because the, the thing you see there it's just a screw so if you put any cable in there <laughs> you're just screwing down a screw on it and doesn't hold it at all you, don't, you need a clamp so kind of like this if you screw on this one you will have a clamp there yeah. so I'm a bit disappointed about that so I wasn't too concerned about the quality but I wanted it to work at least I have like a bag of stuff that doesn't work anymore so <laughs> for example uh, I had a synthesizer I had a synthesizer analysis <laughs> and looked it's 9 volt AC that's cool isn't it because that's useful for the Commodore so I cut some cables for the LED I forgot to show you this I have already soldered in this uh, microcontroller only design so I got rid of all the digital stuff and just I had to test it you know so let's see under here R41 we have R41 here, 1 meg, so that's the uh, uh, restore. Yeah, so we have restore here, so we remember that, and then the uh, reset up over here. Still ain't got the um, connector. So just down. Um, yeah. I soldered onto the resistors there, so it's not, I'm not really proud of this, but uh, it's for now. And I've taken some hot glue to protect the bad soldering. <laughs> Yeah.
it was a bit bigger, so I had to force it a bit harder. I have the computer connected, so let's go in there. This video, let's see. That hell, so if you hold it in, you can see a slight flash. Then you can go to, let's say, red. And then we get there, and then go to the next one. Little flash, and then you click. And then this. So if I go like this, you can see it at the same time. Okay, that's the Exus. Don't know why that isn't working. <laughs> the green. If it does. So the idea here is that you can uh, you hold it for one second, you see a small flash, and then you can scroll through all of them. And when you stop, blink, it resets. So that's it. So very happy with this. I think the LED is a bit too bright. Okay, now I have it in the window light, so it's a bit uh, brighter than it should be anyway. So yeah, so I'm really happy with this. Um, and also, if you have a reset button, you can use that instead. If you, it works just as the restore button. We had uh, Disco Arch error on my channel. Uh, he wanted that, so I <laughs> included that. It was easy to do that. So. Um. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Uh, if you don't press more than one, so you just hold it and then release it you get a reset so that's another feature so you can hold reset it blinks once, drop it if you continue click it will uh, change the ROM yeah so I'm not too happy with the uh, soldering in here uh, it will be much better if I get the proper connector and also maybe I should swap that out now that I'm going to make a new not a new design but I'm going to revise this design update it and also like before when I had the aesthetic I was very very at uh, having a connector such that I can disconnect the internal aesthetic I want to do that the same here have connectors so I can detach the whole unit, so the whole room switch unit. So yeah, so I'm happy. It works. So can tweak the resistor a little bit for a better uh, color mixing. And uh, now I think it's just uber bright. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, before I go. I want to show you. I have one saver, one saver left. Actually, I have ordered a while ago, but I didn't expect the board company to take a week to reply. So, yeah, it's always like that. 
you think you start early but you don't start early enough. Currently I'm taking a course at the university. So it's a FPJ. It's a sync FPJ but I talk with the uh, tutor and I explained my situation to him and that I wanted to learn FPJs for a long time. So this is not what we are learning there. It's much uh, the, what we're learning at the university is much more advanced FPJ. But he said, well, you can borrow the old ones that we used at the uh, course. So <laughs> he will give me this one and also this one. If you search on YouTube you'll actually find these videos about this. It has a... Um, it's not very advanced this one. You can have... I think you can have a VGA monitor. Let me see if I can get this camera on. Yeah, VGA, serial port. So that's great. Spartan 3 FPGA. Anyway, this one is another one. Um, yeah, anyway, you can see it here. So, I will probably make some projects with this and show it on YouTube. I will definitely do projects on my own. So, and you have extremely, <laughs> extreme flexibility with this. Uh, you can do anything, you don't have to... You can think of it as a box of full of 74,000 or 4,000 CMOS series uh, logic chips. So uh, in S in FPGA you just when it, when you put on power it has to be loaded with the uh, data and that uh, bit stream of data it tells what it um, sets up the architecture inside so that is uh, works as you have described in your VHDL code or Verilog uh, I'm going to use VHDL then because that's most popular here in Norway. Yeah, so thank you for watching. I don't know if it's something more I wanted to say. Mm, probably do another video on that uh, that uh, stripe fix board. Yeah. So thank you for watching. So even though I'm at the university now, or back to school, <laughs> I will still do Commodore videos, no problems. And I also have uh, slowly started doing the uh, die shots uh, reverse engineering again. So um, I have been stuck for a while because uh, the files get uh, quite large. So, so I've been uh, a bit frustrated about that, but I really want to make that work. So yeah. So thank you very much for watching. See you another time.